Talking Veronica. This one is directed by Paco Plaza, who also co-wrote this, and it is a Spanish possession movie, apparently based on true events. It's a 2017 movie, and then the story focuses, well, it focuses on Veronica, as you'd probably expect. It was a 15-year-old girl in Spain who comes from a relatively kind of like um, impoverished background. Her mother is uh, always at work in a kind of a cafe. She has to look after her three younger siblings. Her father has died. Looks like they have kind of quite cramped living conditions, things like this. Anyway, one day Veronica uh, decides with two of her friends to do a Ouija board happening to do at the same time when there is actually a, an eclipse. And as you'd probably expect, then uh, strange things start to happen and she appears to have summoned a demonic entity which attaches herself to Veronica and kind of follows her home and puts her and her th uh, three siblings, young siblings, in peril. And ultimately it's a story of what happens. So let's talk about what works first of all in this movie. Spanish production, so I have to point out that this is going to be a subtitled film. Uh, if they like subtitled films, then, you know, maybe this won't be the one for you. Uh, but it's a very well-made movie. Uh, I think it's a comparable film to a lot of the stuff that kind of comes out of Hollywood. I definitely got a kind of a James Wan conjuring kind of vibe from this, uh, in, in actual fact. I would say definitely it is influenced by kind of movies like The Conjuring and uh, probably Insidious to a degree as well. And also the plethora of other uh, possession movies. But it's, it's, it's a well shot film. It feels like it has a good production value. We see lots of shots, for example, in the, the schools populated by many kind of school kids. So it does give you the sense of, you know, it's not all set in, 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 in a room and things like this in our own apartment. You do get kind of uh, a bit more kind of scale to it. And I think this kind of, um, this kind of the, Sp the Spanish setting gives it somewhat of a rustic feel to it. Uh, so Veronica goes to this kind of a religious school, which is all kind of run by these nuns. And that in itself gives it this kind of like some, somewhat of a creepy vibe because we have this, for example, this blind nun that seems to be uh, a little bit knowing about what's going on and is able to sense the kind of the dark presence and it's kind of like some great scenes there. I, I feel that um, kind of give it this kind of like uh, a, a rustic vibe, even though it actually takes place within the kind of like, I think Madrid. So uh, it's just not really uh, out in the rural areas anywhere, but nonetheless, it still feels sort of... Um, you know, somewhat kind of contained like that, if that makes sense. Um, there are some some fairly good kind of scenes that are that are quite that are quite chilling, I would say. I, I don't think this movie is out and out scary. I'll be honest, but um, there are some scenes, and I do feel you do feel a, a sense that uh, these this family is in danger. I think partially because this is you know quote unquote inspired by a true story. Um, you know, you're thinking anything could happen in this case. You know. Uh, and, and you, but you do feel like Veronica and her siblings are in danger. And I have to say, the, the girl who played Veronica uh, does a pretty good job. And I believe this was her first acting role. And I thought she does a, just, just does a bang up job, to be honest with you. Um, as did her little siblings, who I, who I all thought were were really kind of um, acted well for for, for, for very young. In, in, in the instance of the the boy actors. Um, because it did a great job, absolutely great job. Um, the story, I think, is, a, is, is at a good pace. I think it probably hits all the beats that you would probably expect it to, uh, culminating with the, uh, obviously, the inevitably uh, tragic finale. And I also like the, uh, the kind of the, the top and tail uh, with the kind of the police as well who are investigating. And this was apparently based, this movie's based on uh, the police reports of it. What well, doesn't work? I have actually touched on it just a minute ago. This does hit all the beats that you probably expect, is what I kind of said. And But the problem is, I think, with that is it does seem really run-of-the-mill kind of plot-wise in regards to these kind of possession movies. Because let's be honest, there's a lot of these possession-style movies out in the market, and the stories are all more or less the same. Uh, and very rarely do you ever get feel one that breaks the mould. And this one does not do that. It is just kind of a somewhat typical generic story. Now, this is inspired by true events, so I guess they have to have certain things to happen to obviously make it uh, 
respectful of the true events. But nonetheless, obviously, this is a fictionalised version of it, certainly an exaggerated version. Um, and I would have liked to have seen maybe a little bit more uh, involved in what you, things you haven't really kind of seen before, because it doesn't really do that. Um, I did think the, the inclusion of this nun character, um, and again, I don't know how much of this was exactly kind of from real life, ultimately didn't go anywhere. I was expecting this nun to have a little bit more impact story-wise, but uh, it's, it's, there's quite a big build-up to, to introduce her. But then all we really have is kind of a conversation and maybe the kind of like um, a little bit of advice, but doesn't really have any big impact on the story. I think the mum character as well is very unsympathetic um, because she just seems to work and sleep. Uh, she's, she barely ever seems to be in the picture. Um, so it kind of paints her in somewhat of an unsympathetic light. Now, I've no doubt that obviously a working mum in this kind of situation with four kids is probably going to be pretty tired, and I appreciate that, but I think the, the movie suggested that was literally she had two modes, sleep or work, you know. And, you know, I work full-time, I, I sleep, but I still can do things, and I, I thought it, it, it kind of painted the mum in a little bit of an unsympathetic light, to be honest with you. And I'm sure, obviously, it was quite... Um, um, quite bad for her as well, but you, do, you don't feel like Veronica really has a particularly good relationship with her. Um, but at the end, obviously, you know, without kind of spoiling, you think uh, we we are you wouldn't have the feels for for the mum and things like this. Um, I would have actually liked to have seen a little bit after where the story ended as well. Maybe the kind of like the uh, uh, you get a little bit of a text in regards to the, the kind of what happened in regards to the police. But I would have actually liked to have seen that included in the film. But overall, I think this is a solid movie, if not a spectacular one. Uh, there are a couple of scenes where I do think it does do some some pretty good job and have some creepy moments. Like I said, I, I didn't think this was ever really a particularly scary film in a lot of ways. A lot of people purported this to be one of the scariest films ever made, and that's just hyperbole, to be quite frank. There are some spooky moments, there are some creepy set pieces, but it is nothing you haven't really kind of seen before, if I'm completely honest. But it, what we do have is a well-made film, at least. And if you like the Possession films, this will, this, will, this will be an enjoyable film for you. I just don't think it really kind of offers anything particularly new. Um, so I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. So it is a good film. I'm not going to chastise it too much for a lack of originality, but it is there. 7 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.